guys and welcome back to art class. For this week's lesson, you are going to be creating some Aboriginal boomerangs. Now the Aboriginal people are people who lived in Australia long before colonists or anyone else came to live there. They are the original people and there are still family members from many, 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 many years who still live in Australia today who are considered descendants of the Australian Aboriginal people. And they have a lot of really beautiful artwork um, displaying different animals, um, and a lot of it is also artwork that they create using dots to put them together to create these pictures. And we're going to take some inspiration from some of their Aboriginal artwork and also the boomerang, which if you've ever used a boomerang before, the curve of the boomerang makes it so that you can actually throw it and it comes all the way back to you, which is pretty cool. But before we talk about how to create your Aboriginal boomerangs. I do want to share an Aboriginal folktale to you from Australia now. Remember, a folktale is a story that isn't necessarily true, but it is a story that has been passed down through many generations to explain the reason for something that happens in nature. And in this case, this is the folktale called The Sun and the Kookaburra. And we're going to see what this folktale is about so long ago no sun lit the sky the birds and animals lived in a gloomy darkness one day the animals ran a race across a smooth desert plain emu ran very fast i won the race he shouted no you didn't kookaburra shouted back in a loud voice my wing was in front of your beak at the end it was too dark for you to see. The animals looked at each other. No one really knew who had won the race. It was too dark to see. We need some light, Kookaburra shouted. Sky spirit, give us light, yelled Kookaburra. The other birds called and Dingo howled for more light too. Sky spirit heard them and decided to make a sun. He called to all the animals, and then he told them to gather a big pile of wood. In the dark, the animals looked for wood. Emu, kangaroo, and dingo put in a big pile, but no one worked harder than kookaburra. At last, the wood pile reached far above the highest clouds. The animals were tired. One by one, they went to sleep. Sky Spirit took the rough wood and made it into a large wheel. Then he set the wheel into the sky. Sky Spirit sent a morning star to tell everyone that the sun was about to rise, but no one was awake to see it. Kookaburra, Sky Spirit said, you have helped me more than anyone. Please help me again. Call out in your loud voice, wake the others. Tell them that the sun is about to rise. Kukuka, kukuka, kookaburra shouted. His loud voice woke all the other animals. Sky Spirit's sun got brighter and brighter. He fanned it with a breeze until it was a raging fire. Light poured over the mountains, valleys, lakes, and streams of earth. Emu blinked. Kookaburra watched as the world filled with color. So it goes to this day, each morning, Kookaburra calls out that the sun is about to rise. The sun shines and the animals can see the world clearly. But each time they race, they still argue about who really won. So what this folk tale explains is the reason that we have the sun. And in Aboriginal folk tales, they think that the animals always lived in darkness. They asked for a sun from the sky spirit and the sky spirit gave it to him. And if you were to be in Australia, usually when the sun is about to rise, you hear the kookaburros calling. It's kind of similar to the way that here in the United States, you know, you might hear a rooster making noise when the sun is rising, but this is in Australia. So there is a fun little folk tale for you. And now we are going to talk about how to create your boomerangs. Creating your boomerangs is pretty simple. Uh, for the shape of the boomerang, it's kind of like an L. So if you have a full sheet of paper, it's going to be like a little bit, 
you know, you could just create an L out of the corner of the paper if you want, but if you want to kind of spread it out a little bit more, sometimes I like to put the end of my boomerang up here. You could make it a little pointy if you want. Um, this was the shape of something I had for us to trace. Uh, but you're kind of just winging it on your own. You want to bring it down and kind of have it open up the other way. So it's kind of like a big L shape or in this case kind of like a letter V. I have a little bit of extra here. If anything, I can cut this out when I'm done. Just do the best shape that you can, but you want to make sure that it's pretty big so that you have a lot of room to work on the inside of your boomerang. Now when you're designing your boomerang, you are going to be designing it with nothing but dots. Um, I do have a photograph here of some student examples once you can see how there's a lot of different colors using dots to create pictures. I believe this animal up here, actually it kind of looks like a snake and then it's outlined with all of those white dots. Um, we have some similar shapes here. You could also just create a pattern if you want, but the whole point is that everything is with those kind of dotted art. You can see this on a student's example here. And then this was one of my examples. Now, there are two different ways that you can do this. You could just do this with um, markers would work pretty well, or if you only have crayons and you wanna make the little circles, you can. But if you do have paint at home and you have Q-tips, you can dip the Q-tips in your paint and dot your papers with the paint on the Q-tips if you would like to do that. Um, just to keep it simple here, you can see on my boomerang here, I'll bring it a little closer so you guys can see. I kind of made the shape of like a little lizard or a little gecko, and I just made it completely out of dots, and then I started creating patterns and things like that. Um, so when you're coloring it, you know, you want to do it with these dots. Keep the dots pretty close together, and like I said, you could do it with either, you know, some sort of pattern, or if you want to add some animals like lizards, kangaroos, birds, you know, different kinds of things like that, you can. But if you want to keep it simple, I would probably just stick with doing some sort of colorful pattern. The key is, though, is that you are not coloring anything in solid. Everything is dots, just like this. So this is why I say paint is actually probably your easiest option. Just make sure you have enough Q-tips because you want to use a different one for each color. And you can dot out your art. Otherwise, markers would probably be the second easiest way to do it, or if you only have crayons or colored pencils, you're just gonna have to, you know, make sure that you make these little dots as you go. But you could start off with one color, you know, and then maybe I might go back in with another one. I'll just start filling up my boomerang with some sort of dotted design. You can include pictures, whatever works for you, okay? Use your imagination, be creative, and make sure that when you're done, you send me a picture of your completed boomerang so I can see it. And I hope you guys have a lot of fun and get creative with this. And I will see you guys again next time for art class. Bye.